Hello, everyone. Today, we're just going to take a few minutes to talk about one of the field sobriety tests that if you are stopped and investigated for DWI, you might encounter. It's called the horizontal gaze nystagmus test or HGN. You may have never heard of this if you've never had any you know, experiences with DWI, but if you have, it is the first field sobriety test that the police officers give to you if they're conducting an investigation. So typically they'll get you out of the car, they'll have you stand, they will hold some sort of stimulus in front of your eyes, usually six to 12 inches away. It might be their finger, it might be a pen, and they will run it back and forth, kind of like this, back and forth in front of your eyes. And there's a particular manner in which they're supposed to do it. There's certain angles they're looking at, there's a certain speed they're supposed to do it. And one of the things I want you to understand about that is that number one, if you are stopped and being investigated for DWI and they perform this HGN test, and then they ask you to go on and do the other field sobriety test, that police officer has already made the decision to arrest you because police officers are taught that the HGN test is the most reliable predictor of intoxication. And so the other field sobriety tests are just for show. And then also what you need to know under number two is that um, the HGN test itself is a bunch of crap. It is um, an eye test that was developed by some uh, individuals hired by the government to standardize field sobriety tests. It is supposed to be looking to see if you have on board a central nervous system depressant. And the problem with this is that the HGN test itself does not indicate you are intoxicated. It might indicate that you have a central nervous system depressant, kind of like alcohol or some others in your body, but it does not mean you're intoxicated. But unfortunately, police officers think that it does. It's interesting to note that even the Kansas Supreme Court has indicated in one of their opinions, they refer to the HGN test as, uh, you know, having no more reliability than a Ouija board. Many states in the nation will not allow testimony um, regarding HGN in a trial for someone charged with an intoxication offense. Unfortunately, in Texas, our courts are still letting this ultimate junk science come into, uh, into evidence, which is really unfortunate. So the fourth or the third thing you need to know about HGN is that most police officers do it wrong. So it's really important if you are charged with a DWI offense that you have an attorney who understands how the test is supposed to be conducted and is able to evaluate it properly. It may even be possible to keep it out of evidence in your trial if the police officers messed it up. And quite frankly, about 90% of the time when I'm watching a video, the police officers did not perform the, uh, the test properly according to the guidelines that have been put out by the National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration. Interesting to note that NHTSA, or the National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration, NHTSA, um, their last study on HGN, which is called the robustness of HGN, had a false positive rate of anywhere from about 49% up to about 75% on this particular test, which means, think of a pregnancy test. If you took 100 women who were not pregnant, you gave them a pregnancy test, and it showed you know 70% of them were pregnant how much of a good pregnancy test is that? I mean, obviously it sucks. Well, that's the that's HGN. HGN is the bad pregnancy test that tells everybody they're drunk when they're not and um, gets a lot of people arrested for DWI who are not in fact intoxicated. So if you are being investigated for DWI, like I said in the beginning, remember, once they perform that test, nothing else after that matters, they're going to arrest you for DWI. You also do not legally in Texas have to submit to any field sobriety tests. You can politely decline. Keep that in mind. You do not have to do field sobriety tests just because a police officer asks you to do it. We'll be back another day to talk about the rest of the field sobriety test protocol. Hope you have a good one. And let me figure out how to end this. There it is. Take care.